909-793-1065. That's 909-793-1065. And get ready to transmit. The Tri-City Shopping Center in Redlands is serving up some really cool ice cream at La Micho Acana. Then get your chocolates and other delights from Seas Candies. Moms and future moms who visit the mall can cool off and relax while they get treated like royalty at Shiny Nails or Francis Nails and then pampered at Texture Hair. The Tri-City Center is filled with retailers who care about you. Shop at the Tri-City Center in Redlands and see why they call it the mall with a heart. NBC News Radio. I'm Tom Roberts. Hundreds of Mexican police stand ready to meet a caravan of thousands of Central American immigrants now nearing their southern border. Lisa Carter reports. The migrants claim they're fleeing poverty and violence and are making their way to the U.S. Mexico border. President Trump has threatened to shut down that border with National Guard troops to stop them from entering the U.S. U.S. officials are targeting a Russian woman for election interference. NBC legal correspondent Pete Williams. Her name is Elena Kushyanova. She's 44. She's from St. Petersburg. Now, she's been charged here, but obviously she's not in the United States, so she's not under arrest. The indictment is not related to special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation of Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. Wisconsin police are providing troubling new details about the disappearance of 13-year-old Jamie Kloss. The teen went missing Monday shortly before her parents were found dead in their home. Investigators say a 911 call placed from the Kloss home came from her mother's phone. Deputies responded and found the door had been kicked in, and both Denise Kloss and her husband James had been shot. Jamie was believed to have been in the home at the time of the incident, but police have been unable to locate the teen and fear for her safety. The U.S. is calling off a scheduled air defense drill with South Korea to give nuclear talks with the North a better chance of success. Defense Secretary James Mattis and his South Korean counterpart made the decision at a meeting today in Singapore. <coughs> Who wants to be a billionaire? Lottery officials now say tonight's Mega Millions uh, not talking about my worth one check, billion check. dollars. These folks would immediately check one, stop working if they want. Yeah, I can, I can hear it. It's, they're not I very loud. I would not go back into the office the next day. Absolutely <laughs> not. Well, the bus is my uncle. I'll like probably start my own business either. somewhere else. You know, uh, peace, uncle. The jackpot is second to a 2016 Powerball jackpot, which was worth $1.5 billion. This weekend would be a good time to make a wish on a falling star. The Orionid meteor shower will peak on Sunday night. You're listening to the latest from NBC News Radio. Wishing for a little Check more information? All righty then. Better. You'll get it here Better. at KCAA yeah, 102.3 yeah. FM Riverside. Because okay. Hurricane Michael. Millions homeless. Right. Destruction as far as the eye can see. Let's tune out the noise. I am right. the number one most impactful <clears throat> artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. Walt Disney. This is a tough hurricane. One of the wettest we've ever seen from the standpoint of water. And do something that matters. Let's log on, stand up, and stand by our friends in Florida right now. It's time to respond how Americans respond. Please give to the Red Cross. Not tomorrow, but today, right now. No homes, no power, no water, little food. In Florida, it's all about survival. The next hours make all the difference. We can't wait for the government or famous people to sing a song. It's time for us to all stand up and stand by our loved ones in Florida. Please Google American Red Cross, Hurricane Michael. Give what you can give. A little is a lot. It's important check, right now. Check. Give to help millions and millions of victims in Florida. Again, Google American Red Cross, Hurricane Michael. Give what you can give. Please open your hearts. In these coming hours in Florida, it's life or death. Thank you. All right, everybody, welcome to the Truth Only Show here on KCA 1050 AM, 106.5 FM, and 102.3 FM. I think I said that right. <laughs> We're back with a new message for you this week, and we would like to invite you to go to truthonlyshow.com and check out our previous episodes because they're all there, uh, available to listen to. And um, we would really appreciate it if you went on there. Send us an email if you're listening out there. Um, let us know what you think, and we will uh, uh, talk about it on the show, or we'll send you an email back. That's uh, truthonlyshow at gmail.com. Um, yeah, so go check it out, truthonlyshow.com. Check it out. And now, here's the host of the show, 
David Rodriguez. Uh, good morning, everyone. Great to have you here with us uh, on a truth-only show where we give you nothing but the truth. Uh, stay away from all these opinions and stuff. Uh, if you could do that and, and start uh, learning a little bit about who you truly are, you know, finding out something in your life about, you know, why does life respond to your, the way you think? Very, very important. So uh, that's what we're here to do, give you some new ideas, new concepts. You've got to keep your minds open and, and pay attention to what we're talking about here. So um, <clears throat> anyways, um, I want to thank everybody for, for being with us today. And I want to thank the peop all the people that make this show possible. Uh, our engineer, John. And our webmaster, Mr. Joel Strauser, and my co-host and producer, Michael. I want to thank all of you for doing a great job with this, uh, with the show. And uh, <clears throat> I, before we get started, I, there's something that's very important to me that uh, I, I really, really, really believe that it can be very important to you also, or, or of someone that you may know. If you know of anyone, anybody who suffers with any type of heart issues, you either a fast heartbeat, slow heartbeat, irregular heartbeat, experiencing dizziness or anything like that, it is so important. Check out Dr. Duong, okay? He's an electrophysiologist. He's up to the latest technologies of the heart. And um, latest technologies of the heart um, is very, very important. Very, very important. You tell somebody that anyone that you know or if you're experiencing that uh, yourself, I'm going to give you his number. His number is 877-773-8664. I'm going to repeat that. 877-773-8664. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, okay, just to give you listeners out there, you new listeners, that, um, that is so important, what we teach on the show is human nature, that what we believe to be the, the most important thing that everybody should know about yourself, your true nature. Okay, well, how are you made? How does, how does life respond to you? You live in this universe, and how are you doing in this universe? How, how is life for you? You're, you know, we, we're here for, a, you know, some people think, might think it's a long life, but and, and some might see that as you get older, you see that it goes pretty fast. So I believe that it's so important that you understand what is going on. Why am I, why am I experiencing the things that I do experience? You know, what is happening? Well, that's what, we're, that's what we do here on this show. We want to clue you in so you can understand, so you can live that better life that you would love to live. All of us would love to be here for 70, 80, 90 years and have a wonderful life. Well, the, the best way to do it is by understanding and knowing yourself, knowing how life responds to the way you think. We're talking about your thinking processes. Well, many of us have picked up concepts, false beliefs, false ideas, and we live many years with many false concepts. And, and I guess we can say that the only, why would you want to change some of your beliefs uh, if, you know, maybe there's a, a better belief to live a better life, a happier life. Maybe there is a way to live a happier life. And, and by changing your belief, okay? So uh, that's what we're going to do here. Let me, I'm going to go over something that I, I think may help you out for, you know, something in your life. My topic today is ignorant obedience or ignorant disobedience. I'm going to explain that. Ignorant obedience or ignorant disobedience Something that is a system that was brought into this world thousands of years ago. 
I mean thousands of year ago, years ago. It was brought in by people that knew the truth. Uh, that is why it's so important to learn the truth. But there were many millions and billions of people that did not really know the truth. So they were, let's put it this way. Let's go back about, oh, three, four, five thousand years ago. Think about it. At the time, people were not educated. People didn't know a whole lot about a lot of things. Okay? So, but there, were, there has always been people that know the truth. There have always been a few, very few, but there has always been people that know the truth, the truth about life, the truth about who we truly are. There has always been those people. But I'm, I'm referring to the people that the thousands and thousands and millions of people that didn't know the truth about themselves and were believing many false things. It, let, me, let me put it this way. I guess we can say we were more childlike at the time because humanity is really like a child growing up, okay? A child growing up, when a child is young, he doesn't know very much. He, does, he doesn't know a lot of things. So he needs to be taught. And, and we can say a, a child can really misbehave because he doesn't really know yet. He hasn't learned how to, how to behave yet. So we can say that mankind was kind of like that. We were still kind of, uh, I don't want to say it, but I, we're kind of still in a more of a backward, more, we lived a little bit more in a brutal way. Uh, I don't want to say savage-like because that sounds a little too, <laughs> it's not, not a very good word. I really can't think of the right word, but think about it. We were more childlike, so we didn't know how to behave yet. I'm, and I'm talking about thousands and thousands of years ago. So people were doing, a, a lot of times, were doing a lot of bad things, and they didn't even realize that it was bad. So there was a lot of chaos at the time, okay? That's what I'm talking about here. So, so somebody had to come in. They had to develop a system to get a little more control of the people. So that what, I, what they came up with is a plan that we can refer to it as ignorant obedience. How do you get people to control themselves? How to behave a little better? With a system of ignorant obedience rather than ignorant disobedience. With ignorant disobedience, all you're going to have is chaos, okay? And that's probably what was the case at the time, was probably a lot of ignorant disobedience. So in order to get control of the people, they brought in a system of ignorant, ignorant obedience, okay? What, let me just tell you, remember I said mankind was like a child growing up. Well, let me give you something that you can think of yourself that you you do know about right now. Let's take a child, for example. Let's say if you have a child in a room and you don't want him to leave the room because you have to go out for a minute and you want him to stay in the room. That is really what a lot of people do and, and has done that you know about. They use, they use the, that system of ignorant obedience which is what you tell the child if you don't want him to leave the room you tell him don't go outside because there's a boogeyman out there okay in in spanish uh spanish speaking people they call it the cucuy all right but there's a boogeyman out there now what did you just do to that child okay you, you gave him a concept that he's, go, he's going to be afraid now. He's not going to want to open the door and go outside of the room because now he's scared. So now he's going to behave and he's going to follow your instructions. Okay? That's, that is a, what we're talking about here, ignorant obedience, because now he's going to be obedient. But what are you using? 
a system of false teaching. You're teaching him something false because you want him to behave, right? Better than ignorant disobedience, just doing whatever he wants to do. So you put in, put in that system. Well, that's what I believe would happen. Uh, 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 what, it, what I know to be true would has happened. That's what they did when people didn't behave. They, they brought in this concept, for, for example, of the devil. That if you don't behave, the devil is going to get you. You're going to go to hell. That's, that is the exact same thing that you do to a child when you tell them about the boogeyman. So the, the devil is really the boogeyman for adults. And, you know, they started that system out thousands of years ago just to keep the people in line. So people would start behaving a little better because they had this thing that they feared, the devil, and that they were going to go to hell for it. But the problem came, the problem is this. The people that knew the truth eventually died out. They started, the, peop, the people that knew they were telling, that brought up, brought up these concepts, died out. And when they died out, they had to teach others, but they taught, let's say, the lower priest, this, this concept of the devil, and they started to believe it. So the belief system just kept going and going, and eventually that system of ignorant obedience remained, and, and the people that were teaching it were all gone. So what I'm saying is that system exists Today, there's still the people that are believing this false teaching that there's a devil and that you, when, when you die, you're going to go to hell. Well, you know, that's in one religion. Other religions did, had the same, same idea, a little different concept. Uh, other religions taught that if, if you didn't behave in this life, when you die and you came back, you were going to come back as a, a, lower, a lower form of life, for example. If you didn't behave, you were going to come back as an animal or an insect or something else, you know, uh, something like that. So they, they were also teaching this system of ignorant obedience just to get the people to behave. So those systems, uh, it still exist today. But they're causing a real problem now, especially in religion now. It's caused a big problem because people now, I think, are rising above those beliefs. There are many people that don't believe that anymore. When, you start, when you're telling them about the devil, people don't believe that anymore. There's a lot of people that just don't believe it. They can't go along with it. So they're leaving the religions because they don't believe what they're being taught anymore. But it's causing another problem, which is a major problem also happening right now. People are le leaving the religions because of these false beliefs, the false teachings of ignorant obedience. They're leaving, but the problem is they don't know where to turn to. That's it. People do not where to turn, know where to turn to. So they're not just going on their own, trying to understand life on their own. And it's causing a major problem. And what I'm talking about, the major problem is, is look around in the world. We have these people. A lot of people are struggling in life. Uh, drug problems and all sorts of problems because they don't know where to turn to. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to teach the truth. When you learn the truth about yourself, you can begin to take control of your life. Now, you wonder why weren't the people being taught the truth about themselves? It's actually very simple. The truth about yourself is what we've been talking about on this show for years now. That you were given free will. Whatever you choose to think about, you will create. That is the truth. And, and did you notice, I didn't say anything about negative or positive. It doesn't matter, negative or positive. If you focus on the negative, you will create the negative. 
And, and actually, there are really no limits on the, the amount of negative that you can create. There are no limits. Think about people that have, throughout our history, that how they fell about this secret, the secret power that they had using the negative. I'll give you an example. Adolf Hitler used this power that we talk about on this show all the time but he used it in a negative way. But look what he was able to accomplish. He came very close to conquering the world. He actually came very close to it. He actually, in a sense, hypnotized 50 million people to, to go along with what he was doing. He hypnotized the whole country to go along, and you know what the result was. Because he fell upon this power, but he used it in a negative way. That's what we're talking about here on this show. We're trying to teach you the truth about yourself. You can use this po negative power, which is very simple. Think negative, you create the negative. And there are really almost no limits to what you can do with the negative. So people back thousands of years ago weren't being taught the truth because they were afraid that if people fell upon this secret because people were not educated and didn't know any better, we're going to start using this power in a negative way. Can you imagine what the world would have been like had many people fallen upon this power and used it in the negative? There would have been major chaos so instead of teaching him the truth, they taught him the system of ignorant obedience. I, I think you can follow me. There has been other people in, in, we can say, in our history that used this negative power and took on a lot of power. I mean, let's take Saddam Hussein, for example. Used that negative power and he was able to control a nation also. But eventually, the, this power will work against you because it will come back at you. It will come back and bite you when you use it in a negative way. But you can also learn that with using this power in a good way, using it to in things that are good, constructive, things of peace and joy and love, the power will also respond to you. And you have free will to use this power whichever way you choose to use it. That is what we talk about, knowing the truth about yourself. So if you're struggling in life, things are difficult, it is because you're using this power against yourself. You're, use, you're using negative thoughts to create your life. In other words, you're... Your mind is like a garden. You can cultivate whatever you want. You can cult, um, uh, cultivate a miserable life, or you can cultivate a beautiful life. Because thoughts are like seeds. They will grow. That's what we're talking about here. Now, if you're still stuck in that system of ignorant obedience, maybe it's time you start thinking about it. If it's not working for you, if it's not giving you the kind of life that you would love to live, maybe you need to start thinking about learning the truth because we do know for sure that the great teacher, the master, did say, know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He never said, join a religion and it will make you free. Never said that. And he was actually against religion. He was never for religion. And we're going to go on each week, and we're going to make that very clear to you that that is the case, that knowing the truth is what's going to set you free from from all the things that make life difficult. It is knowing the truth about yourself. So, now, uh, the, 
that's, you know, this system of ignorant obedience, I see it all around. And I see people still believing that system of false ideas, false concepts, even though it doesn't work for them. I'm really telling you to think about this seriously. If it's not working for you, why do you belong to something that doesn't work for you? That's what we're trying to say here. We're trying to teach you the truth of how you can make, give, make yourself a much greater and much better fulfilling life by knowing the truth about yourself. Don't go away. We're gonna have we're gonna take a short break, and I want to remind you you're listening to KCAA 10:50 a.m. 102.3 FM and 106.5 FM here on the Truth Only Show. You can find us at truthonlyshow.com. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
All right, everybody, welcome back to the Truth Only Show. That song was called uh, I'll Be by Edwin McCain. Um, right. <clears throat> so we're back. We're talking about, uh, first I want to want you to explain um, one more time. Uh, you Your talk was called Ignorant uh, Obedience. Or Ignorant Disobedience. Ignorant Disobedience. Yeah. And basically, well, your, um, this is what I got from your 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 theory here the, or your um understanding of it it's that um that at the time of all that the these teachings were were taught to everybody like the time of the bible the time of the time even of the, bef- even, even before. before the ancient rel- religions and all that um we were taught for the level that mankind was at right so, like children still yeah like so they told the people then what they needed to hear to get them to behave, be- act right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, unfortunately, you feel as if that teaching, which was only supposed to be meant for those people, then kind of kept on getting passed down, getting passed down, getting passed down, so that we're still s- stuck with it now, where s- people are still believing in. Uh, that there's a negative power like the devil out there um working actively against you and trying to get you to do bad things and right you know that's and that's one of those things that just got passed down and we're still dealing with the ramica- ramifications to this day right but but you know what's happening now is that people are are you know as people nowadays think much more than what they did back then more educated and we ha- we know a lot more now and people don't are are there's many many people now aren't believing that anymore yeah. so people are leaving their churches because they don't believe that anymore yeah they're waking up in other words to to something that was false taught to them that was false and people are waking up but the reason i'm giving this talk is because i can see there's a, there's a new problem being created People are leaving one thing because they don't believe this system anymore of the devil or, or, or when you die, like other religious teach, when you die, you come back as a, low, a, l- a lower form of life as an insect or an animal yeah. or whatever. They're not believing it anymore, but they're turning away from it, but they don't know where to turn to. That's the problem. See, it's creating a big problem in, yeah. in another way. It creates a brand new problem. They don't know what to turn to. Uh, that's why uh, you, when you understand, when you begin to understand the truth about yourself, you begin to understand that's the only thing that will make life good is knowing the truth. That's the only thing that can make your life good is when you know the truth. That's why we have this show. That's what this show's all about. But it's, you know, it's like anything else. You got to learn. It's something different, knowing the truth. Mm-hmm. So. Now you mentioned you you say basically that there's a lot of people that um the ignorance part of that of your title comes from the fact that people don't really know what how to use their creative power right that's the ignorant part they don't know that they're what they're thinking and what they're speaking and what they're doing is creating their their life their experience right and um you believe and then you can either go two ways with that uh you can go positive and use your creative process to create positive things in your life mm-hmm. or you can also create negative things in your life the negative yeah and um what does that look like when somebody's creating negative well, that's why I gave an example. That's why uh, when I'm talking about thousands of years ago when they brought this system into, because they had a lot of ignorant disobedience at the time. What is it? And that is? Ignorant disobedience is when just people are just doing whatever they feel like doing. Because they don't know any better. Because they didn't know any better. It's like a child. It's like a child. He, he's just doing whatever. He doesn't realize he could be hurting other people. He doesn't even realize it. Or himself. Or himself, right could be doing things that are dangerous could be hurting himself or others that's he just he's living it with a, 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 a under ignorant 
disobedience. Yeah, he so, didn't know any better. <laughs> yeah, he just didn't know any better. That's the way humans were thousands and thousands of years ago. They mm -hmm. were that way. They were living under the system of ignorant disobedience. So they had to, the people that were in the know, that did know better, had to bring help in this people right to help the people and get a little more control so people would behave a little bit more that's why they brought in this system of an ignorant disobedience and the reason why they didn't teach truth because you really can't explain things to somebody in that at that level mm -hmm. you can't it's too difficult to explain the truth to so they them. couldn't just start telling them about oh you are have a creative being and you can create your experiences based on what you're thinking about and what you <laughs> believe right and and you're you, that you, was too you, much you, well no no man not maybe not only too much but you can't be telling people that you can create anything you want especially when they don't know any better and that you you have a power that you can go in any direction you want a lot of them because they didn't know any better we're going to take this power in a bad way you didn't want people to learn that about themselves because they didn't know they weren't ready they for the responsibility they weren't mature enough yeah. yet to handle that kind of responsibility what would happen if somebody um you know use this the creative power for negative and i think you you were mentioning hitler and stuff right well well uh, I mentioned Hitler because everybody knows the, the history of... He of, got uh, extremely powerful from being negative. All negative. He was using this power in the negative, but look at to what level he took it. That's what we're talking about on this show. That's what we're trying to teach. You have an incredible power with you that you can use it in the negative, but now that we're more mature now, we should understand that that's no good that we should use it for the good, to create good in this world, okay? But we've got the people that l fell upon this power and used it in the negative. I gave an example of Hitler. I gave an example of Saddam Hussein. R he ruled a complete country. Some people, now I want you to listen, there are, are many people now that believe that's happening right now with our leader that we have right now, mm. came on using negative a lot of negative uh, ideas, a lot of negative concepts, and became the president of this car. Now he's the most powerful man on earth and using this power in the negative. So it is working right now. Many people, if you understand that it's working right now. Yeah. Okay? So that is why it was never really being taught. But I believe that it's time to teach people the truth about themselves because you can use this negative power in a big, big way even to become the most powerful man on earth right now in these times. Of course, there are many that will disagree with me, but think about it, okay? Think about it. All of you that will agree with me want you to think about this power that we're talking so about he, that we all have access to. And you're saying he, he was negative in the way that he was... Uh he spread negative, he capitalized on people's f negative feelings. Right, and capitalized on it and, and used the negative to put other people down just with negative comments about everybody. And it's working for him. It's been working. It's working for him. And he hasn't stopped. And he hasn't stopped yet. So it's, that's what we're talking about. And it's an incredible power. Think about it. To become the most powerful man on earth. Yeah. Okay. But now what we're what trying you, to what teach. What do you do in... in uh, to what do you suggest for people that are living right now and, and they're living with uh, Trump as their president? What should they do? To counteract that? Yeah. Well, it's actually very simple, but it's going right over people's head. What we got to do? I mean, what people have to do if they want to counter... Uh, 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 to, to uh, What was that word? Counteract. Uh, counteract it? It's very simple. The people that are against that kind that kind of power that kind of abuse of power whatever they want to call it find your own uh, uh, person everybody get together select somebody that you know is the total opposite of that and everyone support that person and and there's no reason to fight against the negative power there's no reason to fight negative power you don't need to fight it all you got to do is unite and find a leader 
that will do the total opposite of it. And everybody just support him because there are more people that would support that kind of person than the negative. Positive. There are a lot more people that would support the good, the affirmative, the positive that will do more good for more mm -hmm. people. There's a lot more people that would support that. But you got to be united. You can't well, that's what be divided because what's this, what is the, the law? A house divided can't stand. Oh, yeah. So that's the way everybody else is right now. They're all divided. Everybody, they're fighting their own cause, different cause. It doesn't work. You all have to be united. Find one person that will create the, the life that you and guys that's want. that's really what um, Trump did to get elected because I remember when, when he first entered the race, the Republican Party at that point looked like a mess. It looked like a, a joke. Like they had nothing. They had no, they had all this, they had division within their party. Right. And then he came in and started saying the negative things that a lot of people were saying. Yeah. Uh, uh, and he united them. And they all support him. They That's he, why they have so much power. He They're united, very united. Them in negativity. Right. And we need to unite in positivity. Right. They're very simple because the positive is more powerful than the negative. So you just you you just find your own Donald Trump. Yeah. The opposite. Just find <laughs> the opposite and everybody support him and you'll win. Yeah. You will take over power again. Get the power back. It is very simple. That's why the great teacher said resist not evil. If you consider that an evil, don't resist it. Don't fight it. Everybody's just fighting it. You don't need to fight it. Just find somebody else to support that. There's no reason to fight it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to resist it. Just get united, support one person, and you'll be amazed how quickly you'll take back power again the other direction. Mm -hmm. That's It's very simple when you know the truth. That's it. And that that kind of takes a – it does take a leader to – to unite, you need that person you need that, that you're looking person. for. You need him to come forward and yeah. present himself and to lead. And that's that's the thing that maybe is right is kind of up in the air right now. Like, who's it going to be? They don't know who it's going to be. Well, I, I'll, I'll, let me let me give you uh, let me give you one way to to look at it. Why not find somebody that's been out there speaking the same thing for years, has never changed what he talks about. Mm -hmm. And what he talks about is good for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And he's been the same way for many, many years. He's been preaching the same thing for years and years, all good. Mm -hmm. And uh, and is an experienced politician, if you want to say, an experienced politician, only speaking good for, for many, for the bigger group. Mm -hmm. I think everybody could get an idea of who... <laughs> <laughs> what are, what yeah, I'm talking about? San, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> okay. okay, he hasn't changed yeah. his tune. He wants to do good I for all people, and, and and nobody can buy him. They can't buy him. That's the that's another big secret. He can't be bought. Yeah, he's 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 beyond that now. So why not just all everybody unite, take back the power, and then eventually, if you want to run for it, run, go for mm -hmm. it. But let's everybody everybody support one person and watch how quickly you get all that power back again. Mm -hmm. Instead of being divided, I think that that's there is a. I mean, it, there's it says it in the Bible too. When people are, you get together. Well, and it says in the Bible, get together in His name. But I mean, just people coming together in general um, is much more powerful than you know trying to do things on your own. Like uh, I, even in your own life, uh, I've heard. You know that you, who, people you surround yourself matters. Of course. Like if you surround yourself with people that say you're never gonna do that, it's like you're just gonna end up working here with the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've I've been listening to this uh, speaker named Gary V, mm -hmm. and he's a motivational speaker. You can look him up. And he says, uh, which a lot of people have said, get rid of those people. Find the people that are on that same wavelength with you, and want to get things done and want to go somewhere and hang out with those people because what do you think about that surrounding yourself with or uniting with even in your own small life not not just on the political scale but in your own um personal life surrounding yourself with people that are like on the same page as you on the, oh, pff, on the, there's you know i've always thought 
I've always thought in my job that I did for many years. Yeah. Uh, uh, the guys would all sit around and everybody talking about things they didn't know anything about, politics, for example. Yeah. Because we basically don't know much about politics, none of us, because we're just listening, repeating. We're like parrots repeating what, it, what the news is telling you. So we're basically like just repeating. Well, everyone's working their own life, when, you know, working their own job and doing their own things, having their families and stuff, where there is there are people that are professionally only paying attention to politics. So you can't compete with somebody who only, yeah. that's all they do. But, but what I always thought when all those guys would sit around and talk about all these things that they didn't really know about, I always thought, why don't we all sit together and why don't we all focus on something good together with all these minds together, focus on one thing, something good? Man, we could create a powerful group, no, very no. powerful group. We could accomplish a whole lot. But the problem is sometimes you, uh, how do you get those people to want to cooperate? That's, that, that would be very powerful if you get people that united on the, with the same mind, in other words. The same drive. Same drive, same mind. I've yeah. had that thought before where I've, I've, I ran into people that are on that same wavelength as me because I feel like I'm very motivated with what, what I do with music. And, uh -huh. and I've, you know... And uh, I know a few other people that are that same way, uh -huh. and they're they're in a band with with people that are not as motivated as them, mm -hmm. you know. And I have been in around people that are not as motivated as as I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what if we just didn't work with those people and just worked together and <laughs> worked on one thing together? Yeah. How much more could we do if oh, we have, do instead of just more. one person driven, we had two people that were just as equally driven? Right. That's what I think you're talking about music. That's what I, I, I think, and I, I don't know a whole lot about this group, but I actually believe, I think that the Beatles were that way. Yeah. I, I believe, I, I don't know about Ringo as much, but <laughs> uh, I believe that Nobody John does. Lennon, yeah. uh, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison, they were pretty driven on writing music. All oh, three yeah. of them, they were really focused. And uh, that's why I think they were able to accomplish a lot because they were doing exactly what you're talking about. They had people that were really motivated. I'm sure Ringo was with them too, but maybe he just didn't, he wasn't as, uh, maybe didn't create as, I, I'm not going to say he wasn't as creative. Maybe he just never learned to use his, that's all, because he was creative. Yeah. Everybody's creative. There's no such thing as some, there, that there's, uh, uh, everybody is creative, okay? Because you, you're creating right now what you focus on. If you're creating on negative about how bad things are, that's what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to create whatever you focus on. And that's everybody, every human being alive. Everybody is creative, okay? Everybody. There yeah. is no such thing as a non-creative person. That's false. That is a false statement. Everyone is creative. Because uh, just think about it this way. You out there listening, who created your life? Who made the final, who had the final decision and say so over your own personal life? Yeah. You did. You're responsible for where you're living right now. Yeah. So you're, you're creative. Yeah, you are. You created your own life. So. And uh, that's another thing that that guy Gary V talks about that, that just reminded me of this. Um, and something that we've talked about here before. Uh, personal re responsibility yeah. for where you're at. Yeah. And, and he's, cause he's, he goes and he gives his speeches and he says, all you people who run businesses, you're responsible for where your business is. Oh yeah. He's like, and all those people that you're complaining about, you're all your workers that right. are uh, not doing a good job. You know, you yeah. hired him. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're responsible for them being there them. with you. Yeah. yeah. So it's like uh, it's your it's your, it's your fault, right? And I think uh, that it's um, he talks, and that's kind of like people don't want to accept the responsibility because there's so much stuff that you know people are not usually hap happy about, mm -hmm. and in their own lives, where you can act, you know, if you get to work, you can start changing those things. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've I've actually seen. Uh, business owners no, no. I, I've actually seen business owners that and heard them personally heard them 
complaining about their own employees, seeing how bad their employees are, talking about, and I'm, and I'm listening, I've listened to that, and I thought, can you actually believe what he's saying? I mean, he's the one that hired him, and he's the one that I has know, them right? working there, and he's blaming them. Uh, so uh, th that's, that, that is a fact. I, I remember when I had my own business, I always used to think to myself, I'm in front leading this I'm leading these guys. Yeah. So if they're if we're moving slow, it's because yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm the one that's slow. failing. I'm the one that's got to learn to move them so they move quickly and move fast and get a lot of work done. I'm responsible for it. So I'm the one that has to come up with the ideas to keep them moving faster and faster all the time, mm -hmm. which I wanted them to do. And, and they did. So I, I never blamed them. If I had I somebody know. that didn't cooperate... It was my fault. I, it was up to me to get rid of them or, or change, get them to change their attitude or whatever. But it was still all my responsibility. It, it, that is completely true. But you also want to get those, those people and say, why aren't you putting 100% into this thing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because imagine if your whole crew, if, you, if they had it within themselves to to go in above and beyond instead of you having to motivate them to go right. above and beyond, how much more would you have done if you had a whole team of guys you, you, all doing that? You just produce more and more. What you have to do is to get them to understand that the more they produce, the more everybody benefits. Yeah. That's, that's the whole thing. Same thing in, in businesses now. That's why a lot of businesses, uh, uh, that's why a lot, we have a lot of problems even in this country. You have the owners of the companies, the CEOs, making all the money, and the employees making nothing. So you cannot have happy employees like that because they're the ones that are producing the work, and the only one that's benefiting is the guy up on top. Yeah. That system doesn't work. E eventually, that system has to fall apart, and that's what we're seeing now. That's true. It, it's, it's, uh, you get these giant corporations that have multi, multi-millionaires and the employees are making a minimum starving wages. Yeah, it doesn't work. McDonald's workers can only afford to eat at McDonald's, and Walmart workers can only afford to work at Wa to, to, to shop to at Walmart. Shop at Walmart. <laughs> That's all they can afford. Yeah. But even at a uh, small business uh, level, too. Right. You know, and um, but like you like you've said on this show many times is but. You can, even in that world, you can make yourself indispensable to that owner. Oh, of course. If yeah. you make it. So don't even, now see, that's place, placing the blame on somebody else. If you're like, oh, yeah, I'm in a big corporation. I'm in a business. Right. And I don't get the respect I deserve. Um, but you're not demanding that respect by doing your job so well that you force them to give it to you. <laughs> you know? Right. Well, yeah, they, you, you can go either way. But, but still, I mean. Uh, in the fifties, the sixties, the seventies, yeah, uh, a, a man could support his family on on just a regular job, have health insurance, buy a new car, uh, send his kids to college with just a regular job, which is fine. You're not, and and they, and they were good employees. They worked, but they just had a regular job. They didn't have any special jobs. Uh, that should be the, the most basic minimum that we should have here in this country. If you go to work and you work 40 hours, you should be able to support your family. Mm -hmm. That's simple. And your, your family should have health care. Your family should have uh, just with a, uh, a regular job. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be starving. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You shouldn't be starving. You shouldn't be, uh, uh, be out here. Where, well, just think about it. It's just, just think about if you owned a car dealer and everybody was able to buy a brand new car, what would your business be like? Wouldn't it be a whole lot better? Yeah. If, but only if only a few can buy it. Now you're struggling. Everybody's struggling. So, but as I don't know how we got into politics, but well, let's I, get back into. <laughs> well, I think. Well, we're not just talking about politics. We're talking yeah. about everything. Just life. Period. Because you're saying that. I mean, we've said it before on the show too. Is that um, the money and opportunity? is out there it's out there for everybody it's out there it's and it's not going anywhere yeah. um especially now that you know we've been in a you know had economic growth for the last like nine years or so right, mm -hmm. i believe and uh there's money and opportunities out there they're just 
you got to be looking for them. Yeah, and, and it all goes back to listening to what we talk about here because if you notice, if you've been with us for a while, you notice that we keep putting in this law. This is lo a law of nature that we're talking about here. A law of nature just like electricity is a law of nature, just like gravity is a law of nature, and they work, and they work perfectly. We're talking about the law of mind, the way your mind works. It's just a law like any law in nature. You think the good, and you create the good. You think the negative, you create the negative. I mean, it's right in the scriptures, we can say. We can say it's right in the Bible. It tells you right in the beginning that do not eat from the tree of the knowledge. Knowledge, think about that word. That's the word I think everybody misses when they read that. Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What is it saying? Do not be thinking negative and positive. Negative and positive. Because your mind is creative and it will create both. Now, I ask you, are you tired of creating the neg negative in your life? But then you experience some good. Right? And then you experience more negative, and then you experience some good. And the majority of people think that's normal. That's the way life is. That life is in cycles. You're up and down. A lot of nonsense. You do not have to go down. Well, you may drop down a little bit, but that's no reason to drop way down. Uh -uh, no reason for it. You can just pick yourself up with your thoughts and remain there and just keep steadily going forward to whatever you dream about, whatever mm -hmm. you want to become, steadily moving forward mm -hmm. towards it. And work hard. And work hard. Um, we want to tell you to go to The Truth Only Show. If you like today's show, go to The Truth Only Show. we got more shows like this, and we're going to have more shows like this in the future. So go to truthonlyshow.com. Send us a message at truthonlyshow at gmail.com. And check out my band if you want to hear my band. It's called The Bell City Players. And you go, go to thebellcityplayers.com to hear my music. And you can also go to the David Paul Band, which you should be hearing right now. They are another great band around here go see a show and go to davidpaulmusic.com to check them out and we'll see you next week okay uh, I'm sick and tired of hearing things from uptight KCAA -A Loma Linda 1050 AM 106.5 FM and now 102.3 FM radio update starts now Week 7 Sunday in the NFL. I'm Jeff Biggs, and a big day of football is underway. All seven of the games are in the second half, including the Patriots and the Bears at Soldier Field. Right now, the Bears have the ball second and goal at about the New England six, trying to take the lead, but the Patriots are on top 21-17. to Also, third quarter in Indy, the Colts blowing out the Bills 24-3. The Lions have scored again. They now lead in Miami 26-14. The Vikings are on top of the Jets at MetLife 10-7. Thought that one was going to be a shootout, but uh, Kirk Cousins throwing an opening drive touchdown pass to Adam Thielen. Sam Darnold uh, connecting with Chris Herndon and a uh, field goal, and that's it so far. The Vikings on top 10-7. The Eagles have scored again. They now lead the Panthers 17-0. Baker Mayfield and the Browns.